Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's the life we have and I want you to believe it. But let me to start with this by telling you that every great endeavor has a price tag. Every great endeavor you see has a price tag. The greater the job, the higher the price. And that price is called what? Commitment. The greater the job, the higher the price. The higher the, the return, the higher the risk. The greater the job, the higher the price. And that price is known as commitment. Permit me within the short period I have tonight as I will be ministering unto you in what I've captured the power of commitment. The power of commitment. Tell your neighbor, the power of commitment. According to Martin Luther King, he said, a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. Something must cost you to take you to places in life. There is a price you need to pay to get to where you desire in life. In other words, what is the worth of your commitment? Either to your church, to your assignment, to your career, to your family, and to the people around you. What a coincidence that we are in the month of life. There is no doubt God has given us assurance this month. is a month of life. The devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life. God has given us life. But what makes that life meaningful is a function of your commitment to that life. What, do we, what is the worth of your commitment? Commitment gets you started. Why others stand? It's the same thing that keeps you going. Why others have given up? You say, ah, we cannot do this. This is very stressful. I don't like stress in my life. This kind of headache, noise they are talking with this organization is too much. The stress of this business is too much. now. So people give up. But those who kept at it are the ones that we end up being celebrated. I pray for everyone that is on the sound of my voice tonight. You will end up a celebrity. Your amen is not showing. I said you will end up a celebrity. In the name of Jesus. So what does it mean to be committed? What is commitment? In the context of the direction I will be going tonight, commitment simply means dedication, steadfastness, allegiance, faithfulness, loyal to a cause. It simply means to have a sense of responsibility. The reason why we have a high rate of divorce all across the globe today now is that people don't have sense of commitment to their relationship. No commitment. And if there's no commitment, you can't get a good result. It's about giving oneself to a cause with absolutely one thing at the back of your mind. Only success and nothing else. Only success and nothing else. Commitment binds you irrevocably to a cause you believe until you attain success. You believe in a particular cause. You give all yourself to it. Nothing. No challenges and obstacles that can stop you. And that is why when you see those people that are succeeding, it's not because they don't have challenges. Check out. In business, in career, they have. But they made up their mind and making success out of this cause. Let this boss become 100 times wicked and making success out of this career. Let there be no says, if it means for me to carry it on my head and go on the street to look for the people to buy, I'm making success out of this business. The fact that you do it five minutes, one year, two years, it doesn't work. It doesn't mean that is the end. You must be committed to it for you to see the good success out of it. We are committed when we make a deliberate and unchangeable choice about something and stick to it. Island Church is a case study. Do you agree? We are committed to the assignment that God has given unto us. God's servant, every other thing is secondary to that man. This one. You know the mandate we have been given? To treat the soul of men. Our command 
commodity, the product we buy and sell is the soul of men. No wonder every time he calls for operation, he is always at the front front of the assignment. That is our business. You know how many lives have been affected and turned around by the reason of him staying committed to this assignment. There was some times ago we were having a leadership meeting. How we told him, Pastor, on Sunday, when did you get to my halftime for mommy? Five, six. The man is still counseling. So we think you should reduce your counseling to two. Anything you have done from 12 to 2 is okay. He said, you can take everything away from me, but leave me with that one. Commitments. Somebody say commitments. You can take everything away from me, but for that one, leave it. No wonder 6 o'clock this man is still here. Committed to cause. So why will our life not be better? But many of us had no shape or color at the beginning. But the man was committed to the assignment. So over time, the color started showing. Anything you are committed to, nothing can stop you from making success out of it. I pray for everyone that is under the sound of my voice. Whatever you decide to be committed to from this day, it will end the success. I say it will end the success. In the name of Jesus. And that is why we have seen us doing so many operations in this ministry. Operation 2, Abiding Soul. Which one can you remember? Operation Esther. Operation Come and See. Operation Save Them. Operation Masters 33. Every of those operations always produce something in the house. And you don't change the winning formula. No wonder one of the operations has returned 2.0. Operation to abide in souls. What will you do in this operation? Where will your heart be? And like I always say, anytime I have an opportunity to speak in this line, God don't respect and don't reward the spectator. He reward those that are actively participating in the assignment. Another operation is about to start. Another one is about to kick off. Operation to abiding soul. And all this operation is all about is get to soul to the kingdom of God. Because that is the assignment God gave to us. When he has concluded his assignment at the age of 33 and a half years, Matthew 28, verse 18, he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go into the world, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father and not the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The world is not smiling now. Many are losing hope. You and I are supposed to be the hope giver. We are the one to call them, say, come and enter into the ark of rescue. There is still hope for you. And all the things you are looking for, Matthew 6, 33, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things you are looking for, you are dying for, good job, good career, good wife, good husband, is inside seeking the kingdom of God first. I beg of you in this next operation, don't excuse yourself. It starts from this weekend. What is happening this weekend on the 16th? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Ask your neighbor, are you going to be there? What is the answer? Ask your neighbor, are you going to be there? Will you see an opportunity, if God opens your eyes to see, for every soul that you are instrumental in bringing to the kingdom of God, you are entitled to one billion dollars. How will your commitment be? The question I want to ask you to put in your hand. For every soul that you bring to the kingdom of God via this operation, you are entitled to one billion dollars. Some will sleep in Ireland or two. That is the mindset that your commitment will help you to attain. There is only one time that they celebrate in heaven when a soul is someone to the kingdom of God. And there's no way you can cause heaven to rejoice that you will not have cause to rejoice in your life. Fundamentally essential. And that is what people are missing. They are ready to fast. They are ready to pray. They are ready to see pastor on Sunday. Pastor pray for me. But I've come to tell you the secret. As you see, pastor, and you receive counsel, dive into the kingdom affairs. 
through winning souls. He has numerous uncountable blessings that cannot be quantified. Some of the things we are looking for is inside of it. Many of us are the product of it. We have come to this environment to worship God and because of worshiping God, God gave us our wife. Some, God gave them their husband. Some, God gave them wonderful children. Some, God gave them multi-million job. But he started from coming to this environment to seek God and be committed to his cause. Ask your neighbor one more time. Won't you be committed? What is the answer did you receive? So why am I talking about commitment tonight? Particularly commitment to the cause of the kingdom of God. I tell you two or three things why I'm talking about commitment today. What you don't teach, you don't get. We can only get committed from commitment from people if you let them know the importance of commitment. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. And this word which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So whatever you want people to do, you teach them. That is why the commitment mandate is a core mandate in Highland Church. You can't be committed to God and end up in loser. God does not rob people. God does not use people. If you are committed to him, he will ensure that he rewards you diligently. He says he reward of them that diligently seek him. Please, it's high time you take your commitment to another level. Let everything that has to, do God, has to do with God's work and his kingdom be the thing that moves you. Not that they are calling for some evangelism. You say, I'm very busy, you know. I'm very, very busy, you know. I'm very, very, I love to be there, but I'm very, very busy, you know. And when, just if you realize, the time you also need God for one cause or the other, God is also telling you, my son, I'm very, very busy, man. You know you are very busy the other time. Now I'm very, very busy. You will now have back on 21 days of fasting and prayer. Let's be committed to his cause. Let's not be committed. That's why we are teaching people. We are teaching people because we want them to follow the path. What you teach is what people emulate. The strength of any organization, institution, ministry, or any parastata does not depend on the membership attendance. It depends on members' commitments. Anywhere you see things working, check out the commitment of the people around them. Can they be said of you, you are part of them? In what way? You see the prayer at 9 o'clock, they need to counsel before you pray. Join workers, they need to counsel. Evangelism, you say, I'm not in any cell. This zone evangelism this weekend does not ask limitation of cell. I'm going to roll out the various zones that we have across the coast. Everyone. One of our brethren here came to this ministry through, the, through evangelism. And the Sunday, first Sunday he came, he has not joined any department. They say there's evangelism. He say, I'm interested. The young man is doing very fine in the ministry today. Blessing of God everywhere. Don't say, Tell, oh, well, I'm not in any cell. This one does not exempt people. Is an open check to be blessed if you only show your commitment. An open check to be blessed if you only show your commitments. You don't pray into leadership or success, you pay the price into leadership. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3 the crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests. Heart, you can't pay the price of silver and desire to carry gold, you only get the price that you are paid for. You can't pay the price for a TV that is blinking and you want a crystal clean television that is digital, you only carry the price of what you are paid for. Pay the price of commitments. Tell your neighbor, say, Pay the price of commitments. The master key to success in life is either in ministry, career, or in every area of the endeavor is commitment. I want to, I've come to charge you tonight to have a new mindset on this topic called commitment. Make up your mind to make success of every of your adventure. Reassure yourself, if everybody is giving up, I'm not going to give up. If everybody is saying it is so far, I'm going to say I'm going to make success out of this. 
Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Say thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before king. He shall stand before the man. It takes a man of commitment to stand among the king. A commitment is in three levels. Commitment to God and to his assignments. Commitment to God and his assignments. We all want one thing or the other from God. But how committed are we to his cause? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything you are looking for is added unto you. Including reaching out to the lost souls. Like we are about to embark on now. Don't excuse yourself. Don't excuse yourself. The number two level of commitment is commitment to people. Commitment to people. Where you will be now, where you will be in the next five years is a function of two things. The books you read are the people you meet. How committed are you to them? When I was trying to dive into this subject of commitment, I now understand why pastors told us, when it comes to this, leave me out of it. He's committed to the cause of people, to showing people the right path. And God is also committed to blessing him from that adventure. How committed are you? Is it your commitment does it limit to Sunday and Thursday service? And after they share the grace, we are the first to get to the gates. Commitment to people. Commitment to your church. Commitment to your relationship. Commitment to your children. Including those around us that are lost. And that is why we are taking, and lastly, the third level of commitment is commitment to yourself. Make a personal resolution to develop yourself to become somebody in life. No matter what you are going through, you are the architect of your success in life. If you let event and situation determine you, you will not go far in life. Be committed to yourself. Personal development to make success out of it. And as you take adventure into this, I see you making success out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. I've just talked about commitment to God, commitment to people commitment to yourself. But commitment to people has to do also with soul winning. Winning soul. And that is the mandate we have over this weekend. To go all out and encourage and carry out our master's mandate. And bringing this soul to the kingdom of God. There are many people who are already contemplating suicide right now. You don't know maybe the word you will speak to them will let them to have a change of mind. There are many who are already giving up on the on the course of life, see, this life has nothing to offer. Is it that I find a way or I kill myself? You know how many people are in that valley and the world, you see, come and see, can save that person. An account is given unto you in heaven as an architect. I can imagine all these great men of God that we see these days. Somebody invited them to Christ. Wouldn't you love to be part of those who are making that to happen through so winning? To show your commitments. And that is why we are going now, starting from this weekend, the Zona Evangelism. Every member of this ministry is thereby encouraged to join, to fulfill Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 mandate, to go all out, to go for soul. You say, where do I do? We have seven solid zones in Island Church where we have our various uh, representation across uh, Nigeria as far as this headquarter is concerned. We have it in Abuja. We have it in UK. But the focus for this on evangelism for the people in Lagos. And you can join various zones. They have their time this Saturday. If you live around Shomolu, we have a zone in Shomolu called Shomolu 1 that covers Fadeyi, Owe, Yaba, and Waik. As well as Lagos mainland. Unikban, Mushin, Etiosa. You will see our leaders, our pastor, already waiting for you. The assemblage point for this Saturday is better our former church branch where we have the better number 22 always street time for the zone evangelism is five o'clock call your neighbor call your friends they are carrying out zone evangelism and i'll be giving a mandate operation to abiding soul i want to get my two soul this weekend join them five o'clock this evening and you say ah, sir i don't live into that place i live around this area what is going to happen we have another song called shomolu too suffer two that cover Ogudu, Bagada, Akoka, Ikeja, Okwebi, Kudrat, Abiola Way, uh, Ojota. We also have our pastor. The assembly point 
is also 10 a.m. in the morning. And the assembly point is Goshen here. You belong to that zone. Don't excuse yourself. Ojota, Bagada, Akoka, Okwebi, Kudirat, Abiola, Uwe, Ojota, Salvation, Asis. There will be assembly here this Saturday, 10 a.m. in the morning. A pastor will be waiting for you. He said, Pastor, we have not mentioned my location. I have not finished. Kosofer one, another number five zone that we have. Ikosi Road, Alade Lola Street, Ketua Lakbere, seven up asses. The assembly point is super saver. Is somebody writing down? Super saver, Ikosi Road. Their time of meeting is 5 p.m. This Saturday. Ali Mosho, Iyanapaja, Osho Di Solo, a zone. Uh, they also have assembly points. Abeson Ikpaja Gate. Time for their own is 5 p.m. He said, Pastor, all the things you have mentioned, you don't know I don't live in Lagos. I live in Ogun State. My own, what is hope? There is hope for you. Tell your neighbor, there is hope for you. There is hope for you. Everyone living in Ogun State has this. Border Ogun State has this. Uh, Baga, Ojodu, Akute, Omale, Isheri, all the asses that border on those. The assembly point is Masu Plaza beside First Bank, opposite Assess Bank. Our pastor is waiting for you. He said, oh, well, it's very close. So you will not miss it. Tell your neighbor, don't miss it. And in case you belong to any of these occasions, particularly the last one I mentioned, and you are in church, you say, Sir, I don't even know myself. I don't know, but I live in this bag and I say, wait immediately for our pastor. He's going to meet you immediately after service. Just immediately after we share the grace, let's assemble ourselves at the back of this pastor's seat. To me. So it means you don't have excuse. If you now look at all the places I've mentioned, you say, my own is not there, pastor. I cannot still find my way. You know Goshen. Be in Goshen. You know Goshen. Be in Goshen. Because I'm, I'm, I'm shouting, I'm crying this for this level of commitment because of the enormous benefits that cannot be contrived. If you are involved in soul winning exercise via your commitment, there's no way you are not going to enjoy the benefits. Amongst which are divine wisdom and favor. Divine wisdom and favor. Every soul winner is entitled to divine wisdom and naturally attract favor to themselves. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winners soul is wise. If you have that English standard version, but in case you don't have it, if you look at that same scripture, Proverbs 11, verse 30, it says, the fruit of righteous is a tree of life. Whoever captures soul is wise. It then means you look for them and capture them. The fruit of righteous is a tree of life. He that winners soul is wise. Is wise. He that favored the cause of the house of the Lord by bringing soul and tender them until they are established, you naturally attract the favor of the Lord. Psalm 102 verse 13, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the same time is now. It starts from this weekend. Why? Verse 14, For thy servant take pleasure in her stone and favor the dust thereof. Some they will just come and it's only maybe transport that he will cause you. And before you know, they have become pillar in the house of God. And God said, for doing this, get your favor. For doing this, get your wisdom. Benefit of soul winning. Define it. Define it. Define it. Soul winning is one of the medium through which you can serve God and assess define it. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. You know why? We are not many that are in employment of Jesus. You know why? We are not many. Because the scripture made me to understand. It said the harvest is plenty. But the laborer are few. So if we are few. So God is committed to keep us fit in terms of our heads. Because you know we are not many. You know the way, the way organization uses us. When we are very valuable to them. They will go and do big issues. HMO for you. It's not that they like you like that. They will do big HMO for you to ensure that you are always fit because they don't want their work to suffer. So God ensure, ah, this person is very valuable. 
I keep him fit. He take away sickness and diseases from you. What affects others that bring them down does not affect you. As a result of your service and engagement via commitment to God's work. Define it. Define it. I've seen people that are sick and they have battled, they have paid money for one sickness or the other. They have done some medical tech. And one day they got violent in their skin. See, it's for God and nothing else. And they engage in the service of God. And all those challenges that they give you away. A challenge in your heart, this is an even medium. You take care of yourself perfectly, right? But when you serve God, God is so you show you have a sound it, solid it. You enjoy divine edge as a result of your service to God. John chapter 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he pudgeth that he may bring forth. So God show commitment towards your head. Benefit of soul winning. And this is where I will be stopping. Soul winning make you a star out of many. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the star forever and evermore. People don't know you are doing anything you touch becomes good. As a result of your commitment via service. When you go after soul, you become a star. Everybody wants to work on with you. Proverbs 11, chapter 30, that I made reference to earlier on. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. They that witness soul is wise. And you know, it's only a wise man that they call star man. When you win soul, God endows you with wisdom. The one that no one can comprehend. And I pray for everyone tonight as you avail yourself. And you dive into this soul winning evangelism and exercise coming up. Starting from this Saturday. And it's not, thank God, after this Saturday. No, it continues. The next three months will be on assignment for Jesus. Winning soul, bringing them to the kingdom of God. And I want you to go and mark your calendar where you are. Do an appraisal and evaluation of your life. But we start this exercise this weekend. And the next three months, see what will happen. There's no way. You will be committed to God and you are not going to be committed to him. Just show your commitment. Join some of these souls that I've mentioned earlier on. Be part of them. Just tell them. You say, Pastor, I don't know how to preach. You don't know how to do how to preach. Jesus loves you. There's a service coming up in our ministry this Sunday. Two service services and it's a life turning around service. First service is 8.30. The second service is 10 a.m. in the morning. I also like to invite you specially. Days of Grace is coming up, up in the next two weeks. Uh, the last weekend of this month, everyone that come to that program always have a testimony to share. Jesus love you. They drop it. Sometimes they may drop it. Sometimes they take it home and drop it on the table. And the Holy Ghost begin to attract them. Begin to attract them. You, you won't know that it's the seed that you sow that is generating. On the day of the days of grace, you just see somebody showing up. Your harvest will show up.